life. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's been a beautiful day. A little cloudy here and there, but it's still a beautiful day. Any day is beautiful living for Jesus. It's a great day to be alive. <laughs> Gentlemen got on a crowded school bus, or a crowded bus, sorry. Finally found a seat beside an elderly gentleman and sat down and plopped his little one-year-old in his lap just as the little guy started fidgeting and crying. The elderly gentleman looks at that one spoiled, didn't he? That said, nope, they all smell that way. <laughs> I'm going to continue out of Psalms. I read 66, 1 through 9. I'm going to do 66, 10 through 20. This is a living Bible. You have purified us with fire, O Lord, like silver in a crucible. You captured us in your net, laid good, great burdens on our backs. You sent troops to ride across our broken bodies. We went through fire and flood, but in the end, you brought us into wealth and great abundance. Now I have come to your temple with burnt offerings to pay my vows. For when I was in trouble, I promised you many offerings. That is why I'm bringing you these fat male goats, rams, and calves. The smoke of their sacrifice shall rise before you. Come and hear, all of you who reverence the Lord, and I will tell you what he did for me. For I cried for help with my praises ready on my tongue. He would not have listened if I had not confessed my sins. But he listened. He heard my prayer, and he paid attention to it. Blessed be God, who didn't turn away when I was praying and didn't refuse me. His kindness and love. Hillsong does a song, there's nothing that our God can't do. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Just one word, you calm the storms that surround me. Just one word, darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes are open to see. There's nothing our God can't do. Not a mountain that he can't move. Praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing our God can't do. Father, <laughs> we believe on you, Lord, for we know all things are possible to those that believe. And Father, we're believing on you to move in this service tonight, touching hearts and lives, bringing strength. Your strength will carry us through, God. We're so thankful, thankful for what you've done and yet to be done. Help us as we lift up our praise to you, be a sweet savor acceptable. We'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Beverly. Praise the Lord. Let's stand and... Worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in his house? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Oh, who can? Oh, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to Oh, who can tell what God will do? Oh, who can tell of his love for you? Oh, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, 
we have the victory. We're going to sing it again. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Oh, who can tell what God will do? Who can tell of his love for you? Oh, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. Amen. No other name. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Demons tremble. Hallelujah. We used to sing this song when we were kids, and we would spell it out. Um, I love him better every D-A-Y. Close by my S-I-D-E. I will A-B-I-D-E. I love him better every D-A-Y. So let's sing it tonight. We don't have to sing it that way, but we can maybe at the end. <clears throat> oh, I love him better every day. Oh, I love him better every day. Oh, close by his side, oh, I will abide. I love him better every day. Oh, I love him better every day. Oh, I love him better every day. Oh, close by his side, I will abide, and I love him better every day. Let's, okay. Oh, I love him better every day. A Y, and I love him better every day. A Y, and close by his S I D E, I will a B I D E. I love him better every day. A Y. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for doing that for me. <laughs> oh. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy. I've got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain in my soul i got peace like a river i've got peace like a river peace like a river i've got peace like a river in my soul i've got peace like a river peace like a river I've got peace like a river in my soul, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul hallelujah thank you father praise you jesus I think we're up for Father Abraham. <laughs> Praise
Praise the Lord. Oh, it's good to be in church. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm feeling a whole lot better than this morning. Praise God. Since I got prayed for, God answers prayer. And uh, praise the Lord. You know, I was um, thinking about, you know, Jesus told us to pray uh, that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, how is God's will done in heaven? It's done exactly to the T, isn't it? It's absolutely done. And so if the Lord is telling us to pray his will on earth would be done like it is in heaven, that means to the minutest detail and absolutely. Amen. And, uh, you know, I haven't heard this in a while, but I think we've all heard before God's permissive will. Well, Jesus didn't tell us to pray for that. <laughs> he told us to pray that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, and it should be done to the T and exactly. And uh, praise the Lord. So I just um, thought I'd share that. And so we need to, we need to pray and, uh, and expect God to, you know, sometimes maybe we, we try to tell God all the details and how things should be done, and maybe we, we just need to pray a little more general and leave the details up to him, <laughs> amen, because he sees everything and knows what's best better than we do, and uh, so we need to uh, continue to pray. Any update on Kay? Is she doing any better? Uh, I think she's feeling better. Okay, well, praise the Lord, and uh, uh, Sandra's needing prayer. Um, well, hadn't got, talked with her. Uh, uh, hopefully her, her foot is feeling better since getting prayed for this morning. And uh, uh, Kim Orman and Robert Cozart, Olivia, a uh, young girl with cancer needs prayer. And then uh, a young man by the name of Bo. Uh, he's uh, going to be having a bone marrow transplant. Uh, chemo and radiation hadn't worked. He's a young man, family. You know, wife and kids, we need to pray. And, uh, you know, whatever, whatever need you brought in, let's give it to the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, the, the love of our Savior. Amen. Yeah. He, he, he loves us through and through, body, soul, and spirit. And uh, for him to, uh, to pay the price, if he was just purchasing our salvation, that would be more than enough. Amen. But he came to, uh, amen, to heal our bodies. and Praise God. Well, let's lift these needs up before the Lord and praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Lord, you are just so wonderful. Lord, you are, you are so precious that you would love us, God, so much. Lord, you uh, not only, Lord, uh, bore our sicknesses and our sins, but Lord, according to Isaiah 53, even our emotional uh, burdens, God, and, and, and Lord, those kinds of things that lay so heavy on us, Lord, you bore that also. Lord, thank you that you are the Prince of Peace, and Lord, you have peace for your people. Lord, I pray, you know, I just encourage you as you're praying, just give your burdens to the Lord. God, you know exactly how your people are feeling. Lord, you love your people. And just lift every, every emotional burden, every strain, Lord Jesus. Give them peace, Lord. Let there be shalom, God. Uh, peace inside and out, Lord. God, uh, we just pray for that, God. Lord, for physical healings. Lord, thank you for your touch upon me this morning. And uh, others, Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that Sister Kay's feeling uh, better than she was. And uh, Lord, we're going to continue to lift up this young man, uh, Bo, before you. And, and uh, Lord Jesus, he, his name is written in heaven. He belongs to you, Lord. You already bore this sickness. And Lord, we pray, God, that cancer would be 100% removed from his body. Lord, that you'd grant him health and strength, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Olivia and Robert Cozart and Kim Orman. Lord, uh, your touch upon them. 
And uh, Lord, we just give you praise. We give you thanks. Lord, thank you in your word that you said, Lord, you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine. And uh, Lord, we just thank you, God, for the good plans, God, you have for Metropolis, the good plans you have for Lighthouse Assembly of God. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters, Lord, around the world. God, uh, we haven't met them, but Lord, they're our brothers and sisters. And Lord, some of them are going through very difficult times. And we pray, God, encouragement. We pray comfort. We pray protection. God, we pray healing. God, uh, some have seen things that are just unimaginable. And Lord, we pray that, God, you'll bring a healing, Lord, in their, in their psyche, Lord, in their emotions. God, uh, just do that work that only you can do. And Lord Jesus, thank you, God, that your gospel is going around the world. And it's, Lord, it's going to uh, produce a harvest. And we give you praise for salvations all around the world right now, God, through your missionaries and our brothers and sisters who are faithfully sharing the word. God, we thank you for that. We love you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Let's uh, continue to worship the Lord in our giving this evening. And uh, it looks like the $5 jumped off the pulpit, made it into the, <laughs> into the offering. <laughs> all right, nobody claimed it, so... Praise the Lord. So if you have an offering this evening, you want to bring it up here or bring it back there. And um, after the, well, I guess I got, have a few announcements, but okay. I'll just give it now. You know what? You're all standing up. Let's take the offering first and then I'll talk. All right, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Pray. Thank you, Father, for your, an opportunity, Father, to give back to you tonight. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for blessing Lighthouse, Father. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father. You may be seated. Praise God. Well, just uh, a reminder that um, we have uh, uh, started Faith Promise, off, uh, new Faith Promise commitments. And if you haven't made a Faith Promise for missions yet, uh, you can uh, grab one of the, uh, the cards up here. And then also our uh, missions uh, prayer booklet uh, that we put together. And uh, so if you haven't got one of those, you need to pick one up before you leave. Uh, we started a, a, a new uh, a prayer uh, ministry every Sunday morning, 9.30 to 10 o'clock. It's called the Boiler Room. <laughs> and uh, we meet in uh, the uh, conference room downstairs. And we're, the, the focus is praying for God's power and presence. Praise the Lord, people to get saved. And uh, it's... You know, the Bible says all things are from him and through him and to him for his glory. And uh, we need his grace, don't we? We need his power. Amen. His working. And then also um, uh, next Sunday, uh, we're going to be ending the service at 1130 so that uh, we can have a, uh, a brief uh, members, uh, membership meeting. And again, if uh, Lighthouse is your uh, church home, even though you're not an official member, if you're a faithful attender, and then you, you be here also. And uh, so we'll, we'll uh, 
as long as the preacher don't go long. <laughs> no, I'll be ending at 11.30. So. All right, well, thank you, uh, worship team. Appreciate that. And Pastor Keith, come and share the, share the word with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> Praise right. the Lord. God is our refuge. He's our strength. And he's our help. Anyone who lives very long at all, we're going to experience some trouble. Uh, in fact, Job, in the midst of his affliction, exclaimed in Job 5, 7, man is born unto trouble. But whatever the nature of your trouble, don't throw in a towel. Don't give up in despair. Claim God's promise in Psalm 50, verse 15. Call upon me. In the day of your trouble, I will deliver you. Ah, and you shall glorify me. God offers to be everything we need in our time of trouble. We only meet his conditions. Psalms 46, 1, the inspired penman names three things that God offers to us when we're in trouble. These three things are interwoven and they overlap, but each deserves separate mention. Mention, let's pray. Father, thank you once again for this opportunity, God. I just ask you to speak through me, Lord. Above and beyond all else, they see you and everything that is done in this house today. For it's about you we're here. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor. Father, move in this service. We don't leave like we came. I'm going to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God is our refuge. Psalms 46, 1 begins with these words, God is our refuge. Proverbs 14, 26 echoes that same rule. And the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. His children have a place of refuge. Notice that in order to have God as our refuge, we've got to be his children. And there's only one way to become a child of God. The Apostle Paul, writing to a group of Christian friends, said in Galatians 3.26, For in Christ Jesus, you're all sons of God through faith. The Bible teaches that we have all sinned. And James 1.15 says that when desire is conceived, gives birth to sin. Sin, when fully grown, brings death. God requires that sin be punished. The most terrible aspect of that punishment is the separation from God, which means inner defeat, emptiness in life, and an eternal time spent in hell. No one need to continue in that separated condition and wind up in hell. Romans 6.23 tells us wages of sin is death, <laughs> but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When we repent of our sins and by faith surrender to the crucified, risen, living Son of God, we become very instant children of God. That means we go to heaven when we die, but it also means we must obey and call on him. God supplies our needs in this life, including our need for refuge. Naaman 1.7, NIV says, The Lord is good a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. The late Dr. Herschel Hobbs, who told this story years ago, he was out on a hunting trip with a friend. Suddenly the sky turned dark. Lightning began to flash. It was obvious that a storm was brewing. Dr. Hobbs had hunted that area before and he knew terrain, so he said to his friend, follow me. They hurriedly made their way down a winding path. The thunder and lightning were coming more and more intense. The wind was getting higher, and his friend was getting a wee bit more nervous. Then Dr. Hobbs said to him, In here! And they lunged into a cave, barely making it before the storm unleashed all its fury. Dr. Hobbs said to his friend, I wasn't worried. I knew where to find refuge. We all need refuge from the storms of life. 
not just from storms in the atmosphere, but storms as well, storms of difficulty, trials, troubles of various kinds that threaten to do us in. Isaiah 25, 4 speaks of God as a refuge from the storm. I don't know what storms you would be battered by, but I know if you've got Christ as your Savior, he's there with you, walking the path with you. <laughs> what you got to do is call on him. You can claim the promise of Psalm 9-9, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed and a refuge in times of trouble. But people not only need a refuge from the storms, they also need a refuge from the attacks of Satan. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, we read, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. If you and I will fight the devil with everything within us and trust God to make up the difference, we'll have the victory. And you can testify with the author of Psalms 59, 16, but I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in my day of distress. But not only has God a refuge in time of troubles, in the same connection intertwined with the truth is another wonderful fact. God is our strength sometimes as we deal with trouble we find ourselves so stressed from the battle that we we just want to give out and give up we feel that the wind has gone out of our sails that we've come to the end of our rope and we don't see how we can keep on going sometimes we feel like the writer of psalm 38 10 my heart throbs but my strength fails me the light of my eyes is also gone from me. Psalms 46.1 says, God is our refuge and our strength. That promise is repeated in Psalm 29.11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. That promise is not without conditions, of course. For instance, some of our troubles are brought on by ourselves because of sin. Listen to the lament of Psalms 31.9 and 10. Be gracious to me, O Lord. I'm in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years are sighing and my strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. In such a case as that, God doesn't just automatically bail us out. He requires that we face our sin, repent of it, Submit ourselves to a fresh and anew to him. But once we've gotten right, we can claim the promise of Psalm 37, 7. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently on him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers for his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Sometimes, through our strength is depleted and some cause other than sin, sometimes our strength fades away simply because of the enormity of the troubles we face or because the battle we're fighting is so intense it's been going on for such a long time. But whatever the cause of our weakness, we know Christ is our Savior. We'll spend time seeking his face. He will re-energize. Listen to this great promise in Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He gives power to the faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait on the Lord are going to renew their strength. Oh, they're going to mount up with wings as eagles. You're going to run, not be weary. Walk and not faint. The testimony of one who found that true in his own experience is recorded in Psalm 27, 13 and 14. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. 
Sometimes for reasons that are beyond us, God allows our troubles to continue, but strengthens us in the midst of them. Listen to Apostle Paul's testimony in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the passing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, keep me from being conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more, God, my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In writing to a young protege, Paul spoke of how all of his associates had forsaken him, but he said in 2 Timothy 4.17, But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles may hear. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. In Philippians 4.13, while unjustly in prison, Paul declared, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. A prominent English evangelist of the past was Granville Walgrove, a nobleman known as Lord Radstock, who died in 1913. Even though he was wealthy, he lived a very frugal life, giving major part of his resources to various Christian causes. He preached in a number of countries around the world. One night after speaking at an evangelistic rally in Woolrich, England, he almost missed his train and was barely able to jump on board as it was starting to pull away. A young army officer who had followed him to the platform ran up to the window and said to him, Sir, I heard you speak tonight, but tell me, how can a, follow, how can a fellow keep straight? The train was slowly moving. Lord Radstock pulled a pencil from his pocket, laid it in the palm of his hand, and said, Can the pencil stand straight up? The officer said, No. And Lord Radstock grabs the pencil, held it upright, and the officer jogging alongside the moving train said, Ah, but you are now holding it. Lord Radstock said, Yes, and your life is like this pencil, helpless. But Christ is the hand they can hold you. As the train rounded the curve and disappeared from view, the last thing a young officer saw was Lord Radstock's outstretched hand holding a pencil upright. Twenty-five years later, that same officer and Lord Radstock happened to meet in India, and the officer told him, back on that railroad platform, that night many years ago he committed his life to Christ, and that Christ had upheld him ever since. If you and I have placed ourselves in God's hands, he's our refuge and our strength. Intertwined with that being our refuge and strength, there's still another wonderful aspect, what God offers to be to us in our times of trouble. God is our help. Psalms 46, 1 in entirety says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Back during the era of steam locomotives, the railroads, especially out west, used what they called helpers. A helper was an additional locomotive that was temporar temporarily attached to a train to provide added power and traction needed to pull the train up a steep grade. A number of these helper locomotives were stored at a small town in Carbon County, Utah, because they were needed to help the coal trains over a nearby Soldier Summit, one of the highest railroad passes in the United States. Soldier Summit is approximately 7,487 feet above sea level. Because so many helper engines were kept there in 1881, the town was officially named Helper, Utah. <laughs> 
like the helpers used by the railroad to assist trains up and over the steep, difficult grades. God is our helper. He helps us over those mountains of troubles that we can never climb by ourselves. Isaiah 40, 1, 10, Fear not. <laughs> Fear not, for I wish you be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will, hope. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. There are times when our troubles are so great we would be overwhelmed with grief and despair were it not for God's great promises to us. 7th century B.C., King Hezekiah Judah faced a crisis. The king of Assyria came with a large army determined to conquer Judah. But here's what Hezekiah said to his people in 2 Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him. <laughs> there are more with us than with him. With him as an arm of flesh, but with us, Lord our God. Help us fight our battles. The people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Sennacherib waged a campaign war of propaganda against Hezekiah, attempting to make the people of Judah doubt God's ability to deliver them. He prepared his forces to attack, but his intended invasion never took place because God miraculously intervened and brought massive destruction upon the Assyrian army. And when Sennacherib, surviving troops, returned home, two of his sons assassinated him because Hezekiah and his people trusted God. God marvelously helped them. You and I face times when our troubles are so burdens, grievous. And we know there's no way out unless God intervenes. At those times we find ourselves crying out to God as the author of Psalms 108, 12, Oh, grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. We find ourselves saying with the author of Psalms 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? Oh, my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Notice the psalmist assures us God is a very present help in trouble where the NIV renders an ever-present help in trouble. In Hebrews 13:5, God says to every believer, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then in verse 6 he says, So that they may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. The old familiar hymn contains these lines. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin's barriers breaking, trying to conquer my soul. I've heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. He promised to never leave me, never leave me alone. One man who claimed that promise was Dan Crawford, a missionary of Central Africa who died in 1926. After serving in that part of the world for many years, he was a remarkable life. His father died from tuberculosis when Dan was a young child. Then Dan came down with the disease. Doctors gave him a year to live. But miraculously, he made a full recovery. He dropped out of school when he was 14 years old of necessity, I suppose, but was exceptionally bright. He taught himself, among other things, to be a gifted linguist. He was converted when he was 16 years old and at age 18 made his first missionary journey to Africa. He taught himself Hebrew and Greek. 
learned several African languages, and translated the Bible into one of the major languages. During those busy years, he also managed somehow to write two books. He served during a time of great turmoil in Central Africa. Numerous tribes were in rebellion against central government. Not only was there fierce fighting, but tension and suspicion abounded on every hand. But in spite of the turbulent circumstances, Dan Crawford continued to interact with the various groups and tried to be a peacemaker, believing that God would watch over him. He was an aggressive witness for Christ and took a strong stand against slavery, which was commonly practiced among the Africans. Dan's life was often in danger, danger, but he persevered in his work, claiming God's presence and protection. Following his death, after 37 years of service in Central Africa, this poem had been composed, was written in the flyleaf of his Bible. I cannot do it alone. The waves run fast and high. The chill of the fog closes in around and a light goes out of the sky. But I know that we too shall win in the end, Jesus and I. Coward and wayward and weak, I change with the changing sky. Today, so eager and brave, tomorrow, not caring to try. But he never gives in, so we too shall win, Jesus and I. Jesus shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. That we could come through repentance and faith, might be reconciled to God, not only have a home in heaven when we die, but have God as our helper throughout our earthly sojourn. Once your life is linked trustfully and obediently to Jesus, you can claim the promise, Hebrews 4.16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. There is never a cross so heavy, but the nail-scarred hands are there. Outstretched in tender compassion, the burden help us bear. We don't fight life's battles alone. You don't have to bear your burdens by yourself. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's your refuge. He's your strength. He's your helper. Oh, his invitation in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me. Come to me. All you that labor, heavy laden. I will give you rest. You don't have to carry those burdens by yourself. <laughs> Jesus is an ever-present help. He didn't bring us to this point to leave us nor forsake us. He got us here for a purpose and a reason. We're going to have troubles. We're going to have issues. Oh, but he's there with us. Look up. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Father, thank you. Oh, God, we're so thankful. <laughs> Wonderful works you're doing, oh, Lord. But we know, God, greater days are ahead. Greater days are ahead, Father, for the wonderful things you're doing in us and through us. Thank you, Father, that you never leave us. Thank you, Father, that you are a refuge. You are our strength. You are our help. You uphold us with the right hand of your righteousness. We can't do it on our own. Help us, Father, to release unto you the burdens that we have in our hearts and our lives, knowing that you are more than able to meet the needs of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Good word of encouragement. And, you know, God wants us to, to go out every new week uh, freshly encouraged 
and uh, knowing that we're not alone. Amen. And uh, you know, the Lord, the the world, the world expects people to be strong and to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and get it together. They don't like weakness. And really, the the people who are are uh, downing others, uh, they're just hiding their own weaknesses, you know. And uh, but the Lord says, "My power is perfected in in our weaknesses." Amen. And so uh, it, Jesus is the best place to go when we're weak, and uh, and He always meets us. Amen. Amen. Well, let's all stand and uh, praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, for a another sunday lord to come together and to be encouraged lord thank you for your people lord god i pray your blessing upon each and every one those who were able to meet in person those who uh, met with us online and uh, holy spirit the words that we heard today lord god just bring it to our hearts our minds and help us lord not to to just let it blow away or satan steal it but but lord to, to just like a cow just chew the cud and chew on the word, Lord, that you've given us, and uh, let it be an encouragement, and may we be doers and not hearers only. Lord, I pray your blessing on your people. We love you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go out and tell somebody about Jesus this week. Amen. Praise the Lord.